The following program is a WIC, Women in Community Cablecasting production. Welcome to At Ease with Cooking. I'm Bonnie Kirschke, your host. And with the holidays fast approaching, we're not only busy writing cards and baking, shopping and wrapping gifts and attending parties, we're also busy planning those festive holiday dinners that we're going to be preparing for our families and our friends. And those dinners are going to undoubtedly include many of our favorites. But why not get creative this year by preparing a new and different dessert? And to get you in the mood of being creative, we've got a variety of fabulous holiday desserts that we're going to be preparing for you this evening. And we're going to start with Mike Mines, and he's going to prepare an English trifle for us. Welcome, Mike. Hi, Bonnie. You know, I always think of an English trifle as being very, very elegant and, and just a wonderful conclusion to a meal. How did you come upon this recipe? Well, it, it's something that I've uh, been living with since I was a child. My mother came from England, and every holiday she made trifle. Oh. So I, I grew up with it. My wife has started making it uh, as soon as we got married. And whenever I go to visit my mother, she still makes trifle. So it, it's one of my favorite things. Oh, were you ever lucky to, to have such a wonderful dessert in your, in your youth. How do we go about preparing it? Well, the first thing that we have to do is start with a cake. Mm -hmm. um, you can use normally a sponge cake is what my mother always used. Today we're going to use a jelly roll cake. This comes right from the uh, Betty Crocker cookbook for jelly roll cake. Uh -huh. And uh, we're going to use about half of the cake. The cake uh, was uh, baked last night. We've let it sit out a little so that it can uh, get a little old. And that will help to absorb the uh, part of the recipe, the sherry. Oh, which okay. is the most important part of the recipe according to my uh, way of thinking. Uh, now, now you mentioned this is jelly roll cake, but this you said now sponge cake. Uh, sponge cake is, is what my mother always made it with. You can make it with angel food cake or yellow cake or pound cake, almost any kind of cake mm -hmm. will work. I've heard sometimes two lady fingers. Yes, there's, there's a lot of recipes that use uh, lady fingers for trifle also. Okay, then now, now that it's gotten a little bit dry, what do we do now? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to cut it up and you can tear it too, you don't necessarily have to cut it. And we're cutting it into about one inch strips. And we'll just cut a couple of strips to start with here. And then we'll just okay. cut it a little bit here. And we could be tearing this too, it doesn't really have to, we don't really have to use it. Not knife. that exact. Um, right. And then uh, we'll take the strawberry jam and I have a knife for you so oh, you can participate great. So, okay. too. And you just uh, take a little piece of cake and some strawberry jam and just liberally cover the uh, cake with strawberry jam on as many sides as you feel comfortable with because you're going to get your fingers awful sticky. Oh, okay. all the way and around. That's all part of the fun of it. And you just ah. lay that in the bowl. And Does any of it ever really get in the bowl? Because this looks so good and it's mm, very tempting to start eating it right now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You just kind of lay these in the bottom of the bowl, and you're going to uh, maybe put two or three layers in. A lot of it depends upon the size of your bowl. Mm. If you've got a, a big bowl, you're going to end up putting a lot more cake in. Now, have, have you used other types of jam in this? Uh, is that uh, Well, you can use uh, um, like raspberries. Uh, put real strawberries in here instead of jam. The trifle that we've got to uh, show uh, at the end tonight has uh, got some real strawberries and some jam in it. Mmm. So you really can be quite creative in uh, Yes, you can put all kinds of uh, fruits in here. I uh, ate at a hotel once in Montreal that used kiwi fruit in their, uh, Ooh, in their trifle. That sounds wonderful. I have an aunt that uh, lives in England. She, uh, she puts fruit cocktail in hers, and I don't really consider that the best uh, way to make trifle, but it uh, shows that you really have all kinds of options. You don't have to uh, do it exactly according to the recipe. You notice I'm just tearing cake here now. It's yeah, that's fun. Did, did you help do this when you were, uh, when you were small? Well, we helped do all kinds of baking when I was small. My grandfather used to be a baker, and my mother learned all of her baking tricks from him. So we, uh, we used to make all kinds of things. 
banana breads. I remember one time when we were making banana bread, my brother sat on the bananas that were sitting <laughs> on a chair. They're all mashed up. Well, they called for mashed bananas. I guess that was okay. So, looks like we've got about enough in there now. Oh, great. Now, the uh, next thing that we uh, add to the trifle is the sherry. Mm. The recipe calls for about a quarter cup of, uh, of sherry. And you can use other uh, things in there, too. My mother has made it with brandy from time to time when mm -hmm. she hasn't had uh, sherry. But, but I think sherry really tastes the best. And it's a sweet sherry that we use. And we kind of just sprinkle that around in there. Oh, and that's where having it a little bit dry makes it nice, absorb mm -hmm. Helps that. to absorb it in. Right. Now, a lot of people have uh, take the option to add a little bit more sherry in later, too, just mm -hmm. to make sure it has that flavor in. <laughs> right. Now, generally, my mother lets that sit for a while so that it will soak in and, uh, and uh, the, the capillary action of the cake mm -hmm. will bring it out and so, uh, into the, right into the cake. Mm, that smells wonderful. It does, doesn't it? It mm -hmm. smells just like trifle. Yes. <laughs> and we're, and not, we're only halfway we're through. Halfway through. <laughs> now, the next thing we do is make jello uh, per the in, uh, instructions on the package. And after you make it, you let it cool a little while. You don't want to pour it on here when it's really hot. All right. And then you use, uh, depending on the side of the bowl, size of the bowl, the whole package of Jello or just part of it. And you may end up putting the rest of it in a little bowl and saving it later for the kids or something. But you want to make sure that all the cake is covered with Jello. All the cake is covered, all right. All right. And then after the Jello has been placed in the refrigerator and, and hardened, you bring the bowl out again and make the vanilla pudding that goes on as the next layer. All right, now is that a, 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 the cooked type of pudding well, or the instant Well, we pudding? prefer the cooked kind. You mm -hmm. can make the instant too. Oh. It, it, it's really your option. I've even known some people that have made trifle with custards instead of puddings. Made their own custard. Right. Mm -hmm. Now we use the cooked pudding and this is a large package. Uh, my mother uses the smaller packages and she uses two of the smaller packages. And again, a lot of it depends upon the size of your bowl. If you've got a big bowl, you may have to make more pudding right. uh, or, or use less of it. Uh, after you put the pudding on, about an hour before you serve it, you want to put um, whipped cream on top. And use about a pint of whipped cream with uh, two tablespoons of sugar and whip that up, real whipping cream. Mm -hmm. Put that on top to, uh, to cover the pudding. And then garnish it with uh, cherries and slivered almonds, sliced mm -hmm. almonds, maybe uh, slices from real strawberries. Or if you're using raspberry instead of strawberry in the trifle, put some real raspberries on top. I'm beginning to salivate already. Let's see the finished product. Okay. You can see oh. on this one we use sliced almonds and we put some uh, maraschino cherries on top. It's absolutely. And then layers. Now some people when they make trifle will go through the trouble of making many layers. And our old family recipe is just do it one layer at a time and, uh, and leave it at that. But some people put a layer of jello and cake and a layer of vanilla pudding and another layer of jello and cake and another layer of vanilla pudding. All right, I imagine if you would do that, then you'd, eat, you'd have to have a larger bowl or you'd use the smaller packages right. of the, the right. jello and, and the pudding. And it takes a lot more time when you do it that way, yes, too. Yes, yes, and oh, this looks just Some awesome. restaurants will make trifles that way. They make, uh, make them in individual serving glasses. Yes. Uh, out in um, Bloomington, there's a restaurant called Ar Olive Garden. They serve a, a trifle on their menu. They call it uh, Zuppa Inglese, which is English something in Italian, oh. but uh, it's, it's a very good trifle that, uh, that they have. They probably don't even know it's trifle. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Well, this certainly is magnificent, and we're looking forward to sampling this later. Thanks so much, Mike, for, for, you for sharing your me, recipe and, and your stories about when you were younger and making that with your mom. I think that's just really great. And next, we're going to have Chris Evanson, who's going to prepare a French Christmas log. Hi, Chris. It's great to have you here. And French Christmas log, that sounds wonderful. But I know the true French name is kind of intimidating, so why don't you say it for me? Right. Um, I first received this recipe from my French teacher, Madame Dillery, and it is called a Buche de Noël log. But because of the ruining of translation with the American people, it has been translated into the French Christmas log. Uh, and that's what I'm going to be making for you here today. Okay, now, how, how do you go about making the cake for this? Okay, uh, first of all, what you need is a jelly roll pan, which is about this size, a 15 by 9. And you take three eggs and you beat them until they become real thick and lemon-colored. 
and then you add a cup of sugar one tablespoon at a time and it's kind of a tedious process but it's real necessary in order to get the correct consistency mm -hmm. for the cake batter. After you've added the sugar then you stir in some water and vanilla and then you um, add the dry ingredients which consist of one cup of cake flour sifted, a quarter cup of cocoa and some baking powder and salt and you fold in the dry ingredients and it's a real pourable batter and then you pour it into the jelly roll pan which had, has been prepared. First of all, you grease the jelly roll pan and then mm -hmm. you take wax paper and you fit the wax paper into the jelly roll pan keeping an edge of about a half of an inch around the perimeter of the jelly roll pan. And the reason for that is once you bake the cake, when you take it out, the ends tend to get a little bit crispy. So you, you would take a knife and you cut half inch around the jelly roll pan uh, to get rid of the crisp edges. Just trim that off and right. you get a little taste right. before it's actually right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. It's a good way to taste test. Now you yes. mentioned cake flour. Is it mm -hmm. absolutely necessary to, that you use the cake no. flour? No. A lot of times um, you don't have cake flour on hand and if you don't, one cup of cake flour equals seven-eighths cup of regular flour. So you can uh -oh. use regular flour and indeed I did use it in this recipe. Well, great. That's so, a great tip to know. It is a nice tip. So you pour the um, batter into the jelly roll pan that's been prepared and greased and you bake it for 12 to 15 minutes, okay? Once it comes out of the oven, mm -hmm. you immediately um, have a towel that has been prepared with powdered sugar sprinkled on it and you cut around the cake, cake the mm -hmm. one half of an inch, and then you invert it onto the powdered sugar towel, okay? Okay. So that it's laying flat on the towel and then you immediately have to roll it. And you can roll it basically one of two ways, either from the short side or from the long side, depending on how many people you want to serve. Oh, okay. another great tip. Right. On how large a platter you <laughs> exactly. happen to have. Um, I, I did the short version today just because there are probably about eight or ten of us that are going to be sticking out afterwards <laughs> yeah. to eat the cake. Right, right. Um, but then you roll it immediately so that it takes its form, mm -hmm. okay, the jelly roll form, and then you have to let it cool completely, which takes, I would say, at least three hours. So, so you leave it in the towel that entire right, time. Right, exactly. And then once you do that, um, and it's cooled completely, first you would want to compile the coffee buttercream filling, which is over here, and we've whipped that up already. It consists of one cup of heavy cream. Don't use half and half. I have tried beating half and half, and it doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't work. <laughs> um, add one tablespoon of instant coffee and a half a cup of powdered sugar. Okay, so you just beat that all together as you beat whipping cream and that will be the filling that we put into the cake. Oh, great. Okay. Great. And then for the frosting what I've done is taken two table, uh, not, excuse me, two squares of unsweetened chocolate and four tablespoons of butter. Melted that down. Mm -hmm. One, you cool it slightly which it has been here. Um, put it into two cups of powdered sugar, a f fourth oh, cup know. of milk and vanilla. Okay, which I'm going to do right now. So this is the milk and vanilla, and you add the chocolate mixture also. Oh, that looks oh, yummy. It smells great. Mm -hmm. If you can just be here. Just <laughs> okay. And then you just beat it so that it's a, a silky consistency. Mm -hmm. Well, it certainly it doesn't uh, seem as if it's very difficult. It takes it's really a little bit of time, but that uh, if you've had the time, that's that's exactly thing. correct. It's not real difficult. It's just time consuming. Time consuming. Oh, and what nice. a wonderful treat oh, for your guests! If you like chocolate, it's wonderful.
sometimes you do have to add a little bit more powdered sugar just to make sure you get the right consistency. Okay, that's a great tip yeah, to know. Yeah, and this looks about right. Oh, great. Okay. Good. okay. Now, if there were any little kids around, we could have them lick the yes, leaders. that's <laughs> always fun, As isn't adults, it? adults, I suppose we can't do that on the air, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So once you've got your buttercream filling made, as well as your chocolate frosting, what you want to do is get some room and roll out the Jelly Roll cake. Mm. And you have to do this kind of carefully because it has a tendency to crack, okay? But because you put powdered sugar on it, it should not stick to the towel. Ooh, that's okay. great. And it never really lo lays perfectly flat, but... Mm, looks it beautiful. Smells. <laughs> Wonderful, doesn't, doesn't it? it? Yeah. Mm, chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, that's probably about as flat, flat as we're going to get okay. it. Okay. What you want to do now is take your coffee buttercream filling mm -hmm. knife and spread it on the cake. Have a spatula? Like sure, this I think probably help, help a you a little bit. bit. Why don't you scoop it out of there? There. Mmm, that smells delicious. Mm -hmm. Spreading knife. Do you think the spatula? spatula would work a yeah. little bit better? Oh, that's kind of a little <laughs> one. Mini. Mini, mini one Thank there. You. There we go. Okay, so you want to spread this out evenly over the cake. Oh, that's going to look so pretty when, when it's you roll rolled it up. up. Yep. Excuse me, Sharon. <laughs> right handed here. Mm. Okay. That looks about even. I'm going to take this. Sure. Then we have to roll it back up now. Making a mess on the set here. Kind of slowly and carefully. And this is where the jelly roll starts taking its mm, shape. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Again, the powdered sugar works real well. Oh, it does. It you, you would think that it would be sticking, but it right. doesn't. Okay. I'll get this out of here for you and now we're bring ready up for our, our Christmas our platter. Here. And now, Bonnie, you had an idea as yeah. to how to frost a cake and have your doilies on Right. There. When, you, when, you, when you do that on the plate, of course, you, would, you don't really want all that frosting to end up on your doily. So if you just lay some smaller strips of, of uh, wax paper mm -hmm. on the doily and then place your, your little U-log on top okay, of there. So you keep a hole right. in the middle so, of the wax And we'll, paper. we'll check to be sure that we'll have enough room to mm -hmm. remove it. Okay. <laughs> Roll the log right on here. Oh, that's great. There we go. Okay. Move that over just a Now for the final touch. touches. Great. Take the frosting and if you'd like to grab a, a knife. Knife? Here. And help me get this okay. spread. Now do we cover the ends too? Right. You cover the whole thing. This is the bark of the log mm. basically is what we're doing right now. How wonderful. Yeah. And if you wanted to make it more Christmassy, you could also put like a white frosting on and decorate it in red and green. Ooh, that would be pretty that, too. It is it? real nice. But for the true chocoholics, you want to keep the frosting chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> like me. Okay, I think this is going to look spreadable. Okay. Do you need more over there? Yeah, a little bit down for the side here, and it's a good thing we've got this wax paper here. Mm -hmm. we, uh, I did get a little boo-boo down there. 
But of course, you can always hide that too. <laughs> Put a little holly leaf and berry on there. And... Uh huh. Oh, you coming? You want me to get this side? Yeah, and I, I'm having a little difficulty seeing the end here. I think we need a little bit if we have a little bit of frosting there. Oh, but it's coming along beautifully. Good. Well, that is hard to see. <laughs> it looks great. Okay, got it all covered? I think and then to add do. the finishing touches to make it look more bark-like, you can either take your, a fork mm -hmm. and with the tines run it down. Oh, look at how to go neat like that. that is. And continue doing that. It helps a lot of times if you have some water, you can continue um, dipping the fork into the water mm -hmm. and clearing it off. Or for the more advanced cook, there is such a thing called a decorating comb. Is mm -hmm. that right, Bonnie? Yeah. This is Bonnie's implement, and what you do is take it and just run it across like that and it saves a little bit more time oh and it just makes it and look it just makes like, it like the bark of a tree great. doesn't it yeah that's just Ooh. that's <laughs> just great oh all that i'll take the leftovers yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right wow that just looks wonderful okay. truly fabulous Ooh. what it's lucky guests <laughs> getting a little sloppy here Okay. Now all we have to do. And then do we want it first? Let's sprinkle it with sh oh, powdered sugar. Oh, right, right. Well, here just I've to got give a it kind of a snow effect, you can also take some powdered sugar and just sprinkle it. Oh, look to at how pretty! To make it look like the snow is falling oh, on it. Just gorgeous. Yeah. Whoops. Okay. Okay. And now we'll just remove our. Yeah, that's a real nice trick. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it does work well mm -hmm. to keep your, your um, maybe you, it'd be easier for you to get that one out there. Sometimes you have to... There we go. <laughs> well, we just We're getting pushed that right in there. Look at how beautiful there that looks. There we go. Thank you so much, Chris, and thank for you sharing for having this with, us people people with us. It's, we're looking forward to trying all of these later on. And Great. what we're going to be preparing next is ruby pie. I received this recipe for ruby pie a number of years ago, and ever since I got it, I've been preparing it for the holidays, and our family just has always loved it. And what you start with is a nine inch baked pie shell. And from there, you use a, a cream cheese filling you make. And with for that, you use an eight ounce package of cream cheese, softened, two and a half teaspoons of milk, a quarter of a cup of sugar, a dash of nutmeg, a dash of salt, and one eighth teaspoon of vanilla extract. And what you do is you put that in your uh, mixer and you mix that all up until it's nicely blended and then whip it until it gets nice and fluffy. And then you can just put that aside for a little while. And then we're going to have a layer um, that's made with a product called Danish Dessert Pie Glaze and Filling. And um, it's a four and three quarter ounce package. And then you use one and a quarter cups of cold water a half a cup of cranberry juice and you just put all of those ingredients in a saucepan and then you put it on the stove and you start to cook it and you wait till that reaches a boil and you have to be stirring that so you keep that nice and smooth and once it comes to the boil then you boil it for one minute remove it from the stove and let it cool slightly. You don't want to use that while it's really hot, but you don't want it to cool off too much either because then as you're trying to put it into your pie layer, it gets a little bit on the lumpy side. So you want to be sure it's not too cool.
So what you do then is you take your nine inch pie shell and you spread your cream cheese mixture in the bottom of the pie shell. And then you take, depending on the size of your bananas, you're going to need anywhere from one to two. You peel them, of course, and then you slice them diagonally. And then you just lay them right on top of your cream cheese filling. I'll just finish this up a little bit here. It really looks quite pretty, although no one is really going to see that until you, you cut into um, the pie. Then they'll see the, all those pretty colored layers. Now after you have done this portion, you take your slightly cooled Danish dessert uh, mix and you spread that over the top of your banana layer. And what you want to do is you want to be sure to get that um, pudding mix so that it covers up in all the little, little flutes here of your pie shell. So you want to seal it to the pie crust. And I have one that's already been prepared. And there it is. Very, very Christmassy dessert. Now what you want to do with this is put it in the refrigerator and it has to set up a minimum of three hours. It's really better if it's a little bit more than three hours, but three hours is the very minimum. And when you're ready to serve it, now you can do a number of different things with it. You can take your whipped cream and spread your whipping cream all over the top of the pie or you can take a pastry tube, uh, a pastry bag filled with whipping cream and a pretty star tip, and you can decorate all around. Or you can do what I do. And what I like to do is just take the pie and cut a nice slice of it. And of course, our first piece is always a little bit difficult to get out. So hopefully, this will work for us today. Great. And there you can see the red layer, the banana layer, and the cream cheese layer. And then I like to take my whipping cream and just put a nice pretty dollop of it on there right before you serve it because you really don't want that whipping cream to have an opportunity to start to go flat on you. And then decorate it with a whole maraschino cherry. What could be nicer to serve your family and your friends for those great holiday desserts? Now, if you would like a copy of this evening's recipes, if you would send us a self-addressed, stamped, business size envelope, and please be sure that you do include the title of this show, which is Fabulous Holiday Desserts, and you send that off to us, and we'll be happy to get all of these recipes to you. Well, we're back with all of our fabulous holiday desserts. We've got our English trifle and our French Christmas log and our ruby pie. And what a feast we're going to have here as we leave the show. And gee, thanks so much, Mike and Chris, for sharing all of these recipes with us. We really appreciate it. And we'd like to thank you, too, for watching. And I hope you'll tune in again next time for Addie's with Cooking. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays.